Hey guys, welcome to Finally Clicked, the podcast where we discuss business, leadership, and personal development. My name is Margaret Smith, and I'm the Director of Operations for Pickett Street Properties, a real estate team out of Bothell, Washington. And I'll be here every week with our owner and team leader, Jesse D. Moore. We'll be digging into concepts and ideas that have helped us both personally and professionally. And you'll also get a chance to hear from local and national experts that we know provide massive value to get to the point where it all finally clicks. Finally Clickers, welcome to another day of Finally Clicked. A I... day of it. 24-7. <laughs> Put it on a loop. 24-7. If we went for 24 hours, that would be epic. Uh, my name is Margaret Smith. I am one of the Finally Clicked co-hosts, and I'm here to introduce you to the birthday boy of the century, Jesse D. Moore. Of the century. <laughs> yes. It's officially Jesse's birthday, and we're recording on his birthday, and who knows what will happen on his birthday. It's just a birthday. Mm-hmm. Technically, that- it's not your birthday. So you, you said you were born around 6.30 p.m. It is my birthday. We've got a couple, a couple more, well, I guess, hour, yeah. A couple more hours. It's not my birth hour. <laughs> it is my birthday. <laughs> Why the birthday guy of the... What did you say? Birthday, birthday of guy the of the century. century. Uh, yeah. You're so funny. Yeah, of the 100 years. <clears throat> mm-hmm. No, it's just another day. Just another day. Another dollar. Just another dollar. Mm-hmm. Okay. How do you feel about this birthday? Uh, I'm different? torn about birthdays. Yeah. Do you know Why? Let me hear, because you know me pretty well. So well, explain, explain my neuroses to everybody else. <laughs> my number one thought is uh, birthdays were special, right? If I remember right, for you growing up, your mom would make like a special breakfast. and um, But I think, so I'm guessing number one, it's because it's weird with family. Um, yeah, I mean, birthdays were, uh, my parents were always very good at making sure that birthdays were a big deal which is interesting because yeah. mine my birthday is like nine days after christmas mm-hmm. so because of the close proximity to christmas they just made sure that it didn't get lost in, in the fray in the fray of it yeah mm-hmm. so yeah. and my son's birthday is a week before christmas and eight days before and that was a good lesson for me uh so I do the same thing for him, mm-hmm. try and make sure that. Well, and if I had to make another stab at it, I would say you're a big reflection person, and sometimes you don't want to reflect. And I think uh, check-ins like this, like New Year's, Christmas, birthday, kind of bring in some reflection. All right, I'm a tragic person. <laughs> I'm a reformed narcissist. Oh, oh God. All these things make birthdays <laughs> a little bit of a landmine. Uh-huh. No, but I'm having a good day. <clears throat> so far, I got is this up. a new sweater you have on. It is a new. I like hoodie. it. I like it. I hey, got you got up in your workout routine. So hard to speak when you're in the room. I know. <laughs> I'm on a roll this morning. <laughs> yes, I got up early and went and worked out. Birthday workout, and it would have been easy to sleep in. Would have been a joyful occasion to sleep mm-hmm. in. Uh, but instead, I went and I. Got a new personal record of late. So that felt good. Made me feel like I wasn't an old man. <clears throat> Just <laughs> And then... Uh... No, here's the thing with birthdays for me. I have to try extraordinarily hard sometimes not to make everything about me. That's the narcissism part. And I think I'm pretty good at that now. Um... In fact, it can be a challenge to then step back and allow things to be about me Yeah, for a, a day. And feeling like it's okay. Yeah. Yeah. So then I'm in this battle mentally where I'm like, oh, I want it to be about me. And then I'm like, no, you can't. <laughs> and then, no, it's okay. And then <laughs> it puts a lot of pressure, I feel yeah, like, on yeah. other people and on Well, me, on yourself. On yeah. me, too. Yeah. And at the end of the day, it's just another day. It's so true. Yeah, I think that's been, I've been thinking of that constantly through this holiday season for some reason, the fact that it's just another day. Uh, I think I was talking to someone and they were really amped up about what they were going to, or what they should be doing on New Year's Eve. And I said, you know, it's just a day that we made up, like to keep track of the calendar. Everything's a construct. 
Yes, everything's right? a social construct. And so that is actually one of the things that saved me in high school. And I forget where or how I figured this out. Um, but when it seemed like everybody was always doing something Friday and Saturday nights, and I was not. And I finally, I would, I would just pummel it into my head like, Margaret, Friday is just a day that's made up. It's not actually like the day that everybody goes out and has a good time. And so I think sometimes as adults, we have to remember that too. We, I mean, it's easy to get caught up in society and the holiday rush and go out and buy presents for everybody. And I had a friend text me on Christmas and this was what brought it to mind too is, and they were like, what did you get for Christmas? And I was like, I got a couple great gifts. You know, we did a couple gift exchanges, but it's not like a huge pile of presents. It's never been like that for my family. It's very, uh, we focus more on the celebration. Yeah. That's kind of a weird question. what did you get? Like, I understand the kids asking each other that. I don't know that I've asked an adult. So what'd you get for Christmas? You know, like some people are very big on presents and very big on, uh, gifts. And I, I maybe that's just cause it's not my love language. Mm. I don't know. Yeah, I don't me know. Neither. I love gifts and I love receiving them from my friends. I truly do. And I think it does hit me in a way where I've thought kind of maybe it is one of my languages at, at times because I don't, uh, I only have I have a couple of friends that really think thoughtfully before they give me something. I've had a lot of people just give me stuff and not think about I hate it. That. And that doesn't feel real. And I guess it's I'm such an authentic like I'm like, can you think about me before you like, give me like you thought about that before you gave me my pur- purple pillow? Um so maybe that's where I get stuck on it. Yeah. Yeah, I actually was almost reached out to someone this season. This holiday season. Very close friend of mine. And he and I are very generous with each other. And I almost reached out to him and said, hey, man, can we not do it this year? Oh, yeah. You know, because I didn't. I do like to give thoughtful gifts, and I don't want to just buy something mm-hmm. to buy something. And that's where I was. I was stuck. I couldn't think of anything. And with kids and the holidays and everything else, it was just like I didn't want to just do it to do it. And then, so I almost reached out and said, hey, uh, can we skip this year? Uh-huh. I couldn't find anything that was thoughtful. Yeah. I ended up donating oh. money to his charity. Good idea. His favorite charity. And, and uh, you know, I, I that's more thoughtful, I think, yeah. than buying someone a... Yeah. Uh, and that's something he uh, truly loves. What's that loves. thing called? The Instapot. Yeah. Like, I'd rather... <laughs> I don't need something to clutter up my mm-hmm. kitchen. I'd, I'd rather have it be from the heart mm-hmm. type of thing. Mm-hmm. When so, people know you, they know you don't want clutter. I mean, I know that. So, like, I'm not going to get you just random porcelain dolls to put up on a shelf somewhere because I know you would hate that. <laughs> <laughs> porcelain doll. <laughs> I like how that's your example. I, th- I You know, I w- used to wander into some of my grandmother's friends' houses and just think, how do you have all this little stuff? I'd oh, be like, people are I, so funny. I can't and everything says it. it's all an example of just marketing, right? Yeah. Like, my grandma marketing. used to collect those I had relatives that would collect the plates or the spoons. Mm-hmm. I'm like, spoons for real? You have a, well, I have one from 40 states, you know, yeah, like yeah. I only have 10 more to go. And I'm like, no one cares. No <laughs> one, you just read this in the back of your Reader's Digest or something. Yeah. And you had money to burn before the internet existed. And this is your impulse buy. Yeah. I used to collect business cards. Oh, How really? about that for? <laughs> the dumbest collection ever. I'm, Just for like as examples, a kid, as a kid. No, as a kid, oh, like that's interesting. Uh, you, I thought you needed to collect something. I don't know if my parents put this in my head or what. Did you collect baseball cards? No, that's the Business thing. Cards. No baseball. I didn't play baseball. <laughs> I didn't watch baseball. Um, I did the coins. Like, oh, my mom and dad bought me like the penny and yeah. nickel and yeah. dime sets. My dad did that same too. You know, and that's fun for a minute yeah and then what am i supposed to go the rest of my life looking for a 1945 buffalo penny (laughs) to complete my collection like i've found out real quick i am not a collector Mm -hmm. i would obsess Mm -hmm. too much and it would it would affect my personality it would affect my day i agree me too like my ocd would be out of hand i'd be like i don't have this one thing and then while you were collecting business cards it's so funny i was collecting um, business card holders I was obsessed with them, and my mom knew it, so she, every once in a while she'd get me one, and I don't know, I thought it was so, I was like, one day I'm going to have we a were desk. We mentored, yeah. I know, I was like thinking, <laughs> one, one day I'm going to have a desk, and I'm going to have the cutest business card holder. I don't know what my obsession was. It was that and trolls. 
But you're right. Like with the trolls more than the business card holders, I was obsessed with having every type of troll that Fred Meyer had. And then that my OCD would just go into overdrive because I'd have to arrange them perfectly. And if I was missing one, I'd need to make that $9 stat so I could go buy it. Yeah. I'm just imagining me. I remember being on a plane. I had to go see some specialists down in California when I was 11. And I was on this plane, and I remember like asking people for the business card, and they're like, oh, "Why is this kid, this like country ranch kid, asking me for my?" Did you see very card? well at that point? Uh, yeah, and I don't know. I, my eyes might have been dilated, but um, I asked this guy for his business card. In hindsight, he was like a super flamboyantly gay hairstylist mm -hmm. from California mm -hmm. who was on my flight. And um, in my memory, I can recall this. And my dad, I can recall my dad's reaction too, which was he was fine, everything was fine. But this guy, uh, this Dallas, his card was like a six by eight mailer. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, well, this I can't collect this. I can't put this in my collection. This is like a mailer. Oh, that's amazing. And uh, he was so, I think he was probably drunk or high yeah. too. Because then he was like gonna send me all of his friends' business cards, and <laughs> I think my dad's like, "No, that's okay. <laughs> like, we're not giving you our address." <laughs> oh my god, that's amazing! I think you should share the story of why you went to California. Have Have we talked about it before? We might have mentioned it. Well, I mean, I went to California more than once. I my aunt lived in Topanga Canyon, which is above Malibu. And um, that was always attractive to us because we that's clear close to Disneyland. And so my sister and I always kind of just talked about it and dreamed about going. And did you get to go when you were little? I don't I think the first time I went when is when I was 11. I'm trying to remember. I want to say my sister and I went another I'm kind time. I'm surprised, I guess, that you got to go. I want to say my sister and I went another time. Just the two of you? No, it would have been with my mom or my dad. Not both not both at the same time. Because someone always had to stay home for the ranch. Mm -hmm. So, no, but when I was 11, I was diagnosed with um, juvenile... Uh, I don't know what's the word. Glaucoma. Glaucoma, yeah. Sorry, space it out. And that is a degenerative disease... And I was supposed to be blind by the time I was 16. Because we grew up in a s small town, you know, these doctors aren't used to seeing a lot of abnormalities. Yeah. And he didn't trust his diagnosis 100%. So we went to California to see some specialists. And I was they confirmed the night diagnosis there. And so it was a weird time, a weird reason to go to Disneyland. I went to Disneyland with my eyes fully dilated. <laughs> and it was bright. You yeah, know? I bet. And going on the rides, and and it was weird to think that I might be blind in a few years. Um, was it scary at all? I don't know. I think at eleven, it's it hard to real. know what's real and what. Yeah. yeah, it didn't really feel real. So I've met a few people who started out seeing and then went blind, like in their teens or twenties. It's a really backwards experience. From because my mom used to work with the blind, and so most of them were blind from when they were born. Um, but when you start out seeing and then you lose it, your senses aren't. I mean, they ch they change, but not like when you're born with it. Like usually, when you're born with it, um, your hearing is heightened or like other things. You know, um, that would have been a whole different life story, for sure. I think. Yeah, and uh, end of the story is uh, my parents put me. On a very restrictive diet of eating, I ate uh, so much cabbage, so and then my parents prayed over me, and and then cabbage. It, Was it just greens or just specifically cabbage? No, cabbage specifically. Oh, and uh, so interesting. Anyway, it corrected itself, which is an anomaly. It does, and that's a degenerative disease. It goes away, mm -hmm. and you know, I mean, it doesn't go away. Yeah, you have it or you don't, <laughs> and uh, I had it, and then it's. I was supposed to go blind and. When I went to the eye doctor, my that pressure in a glaucomic eye, it's the pressure is like yeah. fifteen and one fifty or some crazy number. I don't know what, but mine was 
when I went back, it was 15 over 15. So that's crazy. The pressure had. That's why whenever itself. we're having a rough day, I always look at him and say, you know, you're fucking meant to be. Oh, shit, I swore. <laughs> <laughs> we're allowed to you're swear. You're mm, fucking meant to be here. Like you've had too many miraculous things happen in your life. That's interesting. Yeah. So. That's Usually why I, I don't say that. Afterwards. That's why I went to California. <laughs> my mom will enjoy that. So yeah, I'm back to my birthday. Yeah. Back to me. Martin. How are you feeling right now? How do you mean? Are you feeling like, are you, how do you feel? Not just about your birthday, but today. I feel I actually, so this kind of ties into uh, what we're going to talk about, which we didn't know what we were going to talk about, but yeah. if we want to talk about our word of the year, I feel like, uh, that's a good segue. Mm -hmm. So last year um, was the year of the back. That was me. <laughs> the year of the back? We're just going to call it that. Like, I literally went to a doctor <laughs> in January. Like, yeah, I started in January. Yeah. And let's just, like, remind the audience or tell them, since I don't know if they know, like, you'd been putting this off for years. Fear of the doctor. You don't like, you don't love going to the doctor. So it's a big deal for you to get up and go. Well, when you have a bad back, you just think you have a bad back. Yeah. Isn't that funny? Mm -hmm. It's a little bit like because a bad back is like encompasses so many things for people, right? It's mm -hmm. almost like you've been cursed by mm -hmm. this witch passing by a witch, mm -hmm. and you're like, oh, well, I have a bad back mm -hmm. until the witch comes back. So I don't know. Um, There's no sense going to a doctor, mm -hmm. <laughs> and nothing they can do. And I think I, <clears throat> I gone to chiropractic. I did what my parents did. Mm -hmm. You know, when you'd heard horror stories from other people. Well, my dad has a bad back. He has the same bad back I have. Like he, it, he explains it the same. The pain's the same. Mm. So I used his experience to define my reality, mm -hmm. which was not so bright. And that is interesting. Then when I, when chiropractic didn't, I've spent a fortune in chiropractic, which is so hilarious because, um, what ended up being off my back chiropractic can't touch yeah it has nothing to do with it yeah and so i spent all I this time i remember you would go and you'd get like this temporary relief i spent all this time and money going doing chiropractic because i learned it from my parents and i i was told not to go to doctors and they cost money and they can't fix i don't know what mm -hmm. and so it got so bad finally it was horrible well and i started dating a nurse which will make you challenge any of your beliefs <laughs> outside of western medicine and um, she really was a driving force in me figuring this all out. Thank you, Jill. And literally on December 30th, just uh, five days ago, I got a cortisone shot deep into my hip. And uh, it took a year to get it. Like, it took a year to figure it out. Yeah, for them to approve it. And get to the place where we could do this. So... So that was so last year was the year of the back. My <laughs> word for last year was intention. And which shared one of your words. You had two words last year. It was a yeah. two word year. For intention. <laughs> intention and intuition. Because and that, that podcast we did with N May where she talked about how intention actually leads yeah, to intuition. Opens the door for intuition. Yeah. And uh so I feel good about that. I feel like I capitalized on my word. You know, and that word was a reminder for me to have intention and to move forward towards the things I want in life. Yeah. And uh, now it's a new year. New word. <laughs> so have you given thought to yours? I have. I'm hoping you can help me with it. I would love to help you with it. <laughs> I was telling you right before we started, before we pushed record, that... Uh, it's always interesting watching conversations on social media and there's there's people on Instagram and Facebook that are going back and forth. Do you pick a word? Do you pick what's your word? What's your word? Oh, I hate picking a word, you know. I think it's stupid. Don't pick a word. And I was like, you know what? Do what works for you. Do if picking a word doesn't work, don't worry about it then. Pick maybe an intention. <clears throat> I but, love the people that are emotional about it. They're like very emotional. <laughs> yeah, don't get a word, just do it. Just do you it. You know, like <laughs> They're like, yeah, yeah, my word's doing it. My word's just get out there and do it. Hustle. It's always hustle. There's no other word. No, man. No, we're hustle. Side hustle. Main hustle. Backwards hustle. Hustle. Hustle all over the place. 
Yeah, that's like my impression of Gary Vee. That's <laughs> all. Yeah, and but the reality is, is that um, I like I like the variability of it. Yeah, because it shouldn't be the same mm-hmm. every year. Mm-hmm. Because you you evolve and mm-hmm. you adapt and you mm-hmm. change. So one, it reminds me. So I get stuck. So I was telling you this. I told you that Enme told me last year when I met with her that I needed to stop doing and just start being. And I was like, God, what does that mean? Because I feel like for, and I've mentioned this before, so much of my life I was stagnant, even though I really wasn't. Like I was going, I was in high school, then I went to college, then I got my master's, then I started photography. Like I did things, but I didn't feel awake until I really started this job and started doing <laughs> woke. And then I started doing all this personal development. And so I always go back to what I heard Gary Keller say once when you and I were sitting in class with him and he said that when he goes to teach Quantum Leap, which is a class for um, kids, essentially 13 to 18, I think, he said, just do something, just try it. And I feel like I didn't do that until I got to be, I mean, like 30, 32. And so I'm afraid that if I stop, nothing will happen. And I'll go back to where I was before, which things were happening, but not like I wasn't actively pushing towards anything. And so I'm afraid of like, I'm stuck. That's where I feel in my word. I have some words and ideas that I want to throw by you, but I feel stuck because um, I don't want to just burn, turn my wheels. I've done that before. And I know that's not helpful. You just don't want to burn your wheels. Yeah. I don't want to burn my wheels. <laughs> and I don't want to stop. Like I really like never my- stop stopping. I know. <laughs> never stop. Oh my never God. Stopping. Okay. I wish we had Sorry, some music to drop in suck. right that now. That was a quote from a movie. Never so stop, I don't stop. know. I feel stuck. Like, I don't want to stop growing. I'm You're, so this addicted. This is a revelation. <laughs> what? Margaret Smith feels stuck. Yeah, absolutely. And I've just heard about this, this word thing. About this whole concept. I think not just the word, but okay. the concept of like um, being. And so I know a couple uh, oh, admin. I do not know how to be. <laughs> Oh my God, you guys, he's killing me right now. I've ha- had this conversation with a couple different people right now, and I know a lot of people are struggling with this, and they want to set an intention for the year, and so I think that's why this conversation is perfect, because I'm honestly going into this. I don't fucking have my word, and so... Um, Do you know what someone said to me that really messed me up one time? Oh God, what? I um, I don't know how I made it to 20 years old, to be honest with you. Like I, I look back on my upbringing and how I was raised. Well, yeah. And <clears throat> my environment is specifically and how contrary it is to who I am. Mm-hmm. And that's more about my impulsivity and spontaneity mm-hmm. and wanting to do new so things. So contrary to what you did, yeah. And I didn't have, I didn't grow up in an environment that fostered that. And um, so anyway, I get through high school and you have to understand how motivated I was to get out. Like I graduated I had more money than my parents because I knew I had to pay. If no one was going to pay my way to college, yeah. I had to pay my own way. Did so, they want you to go to college? They were f- supportive, but just said, we can't help you, you know? Okay. And if you want to go, you're going to have to figure it out. So, so they didn't really tell you what to do after, um, you were, after you were out of high school? I mean, I think they're good parents in that they pointed me in the right direction as far as college goes. My parents would have been fine if I didn't go to college. Like, and would I you know, have stayed on the ranch? Like, what did they... Well, that wasn't an option for me. Like, I didn't want to stay on the ranch. Did they want you to? I th- that's a difficult question I think answer. I was... Because in my head, I'm thinking, when you're raised on a ranch, oftentimes families want you to stay there to take it over or be, you know... Yeah, so uh, this is hard. So my dad... You have to understand my dad a little bit. My father... I don't know that he ever wanted to take over the ranch. And what I mean by that was, and actually, he and I are extremely similar this way. Mm-hmm. I don't know what happened to him, if he had a head injury or what happened that changed him. But, like, he was a very different teenager, adolescent. Uh, when he graduated high school, he went to the highway and hitchhiked mm-hmm. down to Colorado. Which sounds like something you would Joined love to a do. martial arts commune mm-hmm. and then went to California. Like, he had a very... Um, nomadic life out of high school. And um, the only thing that brought him back to the ranch was his father passing away. And and Montana ranches are very patriarchal. Um, It goes to the firstborn son, generally. And so my dad had 
three older brothers or three older sisters and all oh, the poor girls and no full blooded brothers um there was some half brothers but it's weird like that it is very much like royalty like english royalty where it goes to the full blooded <laughs> firstborn son were any of the sisters disappointed you think oh yeah yeah and they were capable that's the thing is there was they you know there's one specifically that worked the ranch knew the ranch was more than capable of huh. doing it but for whatever reason um so my dad was what happened was my dad, my parents were hippies, and then they became born again Christians. So they went to a born again Christian hippie camp commune in New Mexico, where they're living on tuna fish sandwiches, mm -hmm. peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. And then I was conceived. And then my dad had to figure things out really quick because they had no money. And so he joined the Air Force. I mean, he went from being about that. a hippie to joining the Air Force. Like but how he, long? What do you mean? How long was he in the Air Force? Well, he would have done it for four years. That's You sign up, and it's a four-year stint. So he joined before I was born. That's crazy. I'm born. They relocate to Great Falls, Montana, where there's a military base. They, My sister's conceived and born there. And then shortly after that, my grandfather dies. And my grandfather, who is your great grandfather? Um, no, my grandfather. Okay, the other his one. His dad. Okay. Passes away, and my dad gets a hardship discharge to leave the military to okay. go back and run the ranch, which is crazy, right? But back then they did that, and so he he was only in the military like three years, maybe less than that, and so then um, my dad went from being like this very like follow your dreams hippie mm -hmm. to having to give up all of his dreams and be a father mm -hmm. and a rancher. My dad was a, he's a very talented writer and he was writing for the great falls newspaper. He was always, did he, did he want to have kids? I, I mean, I think so based on, I, I think so. And so, I just I think everything happened faster and in a way that thought. you would think. Um, I don't think they want to have kids that young. Okay. Uh, <laughs> but anyway, so my point is, my father had ambitions that were outside the ranch, mm -hmm. you know, and he followed those, and he hitchhiked, and he did all he did martial arts, he did a lot of things, and he worked he worked at a newspaper. But then when things got, he was put himself in a situation where. He was asked to run the ranch for the family, and he felt like he needed to do that. And, he, and to do that, he had to give up on some of his dreams. Hmm. And so he, what he, would have done. he did that. He was very much on the path of becoming a journalist and a you know, being a writer full time. So interesting. And then, um, so anyway. Somehow, I'm telling you this long story to get back to <laughs> how similar my dad and I are. Yeah. In that, when I was in high school, they, so my dad basically said, he ranch life is a hard life hard, to like want yeah. for your kids. Yeah. Because you're broke most of the time. Mm -hmm. It's a hard work. It's, but it's good work. Mm -hmm. Like you're outside. You feel accomplished physically, right. probably. Yeah. And so there's a lot of pride in uh, being a rancher. And so, and every rancher wants his kid to want to be a rancher, want to be a cowboy. At the same time, that industry has changed so much in the last 30 years Yeah. that I think he saw the writing on the wall and he kind of didn't want that life for me. He was never oppressive about it. He never said, hey, I need you to come back and work on the ranch. I want you to take over the ranch. It really wasn't part of our regular conversation. It was more like I would say there would be times when I would get nostalgic and say, I want to be a rancher. Mm -hmm. I want to take over the ranch. But then I had the reality of the situation, which is that ranch barely supported my mom and my dad, mm -hmm. certainly wasn't going to support my family mm -hmm. in a way that I wanted it to work. Mm -hmm. And so I took that option away. 
And he kind of did too. He kind of said, yeah, you know, uh, I don't know if I want this life for you. It's kind of awesome. And so I kind of always knew I had to figure out what my path was going to be separate. And so when I left high school, I was ready to figure it out, find something new, hmm. do something different. Interesting. Why were we talking about that? You have to <laughs> loop me back in. Uh, oh, I was talking about how at the very beginning I was saying I've been told that I need to stop doing and just start being. And then I felt like I was in the middle of this uh, kind of frustrated feeling of not knowing what my focus should be this year. And yeah. then I forget how it led to. Another ranch. We got to like. Right, take notes <laughs> yeah, I know, for our right? own show because then I get on a story and then I don't know why I, why I was talking about it we're talking about what you oh you were saying business cards that you loved to collect business cards oh so I think it's funny I don't know if this is why but I mean it's funny right that later in life I yeah. end up in business and mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. having business cards and you end up organizing <laughs> oh, being, yes. being the one that organizes for oh, me God, I just snorted yeah <laughs> Yeah, and I think somehow out of that, you're just asking me about. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if you can path. help me, uh, yeah, I, th I think figuring out your path, and then well, then I think I took the conversation sideways because I wanted you to tell the story about your eyesight. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, if you could help me wade through some of what I'm feeling. That How many words helpful. of the year are you gonna have this year? <laughs> um, whatever feels right. So if it's one, two, three, I don't care. Um, okay. Maybe so it'll be an intention. So focus on that right now. Focus on what? Those numbers, one, two, and three. Okay. Which one feels right? Two. Two, again uh -huh. with you. You're always a little extra. I don't even. <laughs> extra. Maybe I should have that be my word, extra. Yeah. Always a little extra. What are you yeah. um, gravitating towards? Are there words on the table? Yes, there's words on my notebook here. So I have wealth, surrender, be, dance. Abundance, courage, or flow. Some of those words seem to be in opposition of each other. Of each other? Yeah. Which ones? Well, when I, th I mean, I don't think, I mean, surrender and courage are very <laughs> <laughs> contrary words. Well, I can tell you, I guess, my some of my thoughts behind them. Hold and on. Um, <laughs> flow and be I mean they can be in the same family mm -hmm. if you're in flow all the time mm -hmm. I don't think anyone's in flow all the time yeah wealth and abundance go together dance stands out to me because it's out of everything it's the one that kind of stands alone mm -hmm. so I would ask you which of those movements resonates with you which of these movements yeah so think about the velocity of the word the velocity of the word so the every word it? has has a velocity <clears throat> i was very intentional this year about the velocity of my word which sounds weird saying that way but i th i think the impact the power um i wanted should i talk about my word yeah first you're gonna laugh because it's a, it's a not a normal word. Oh, well, that's perfect for you. So my word for 2020. <laughs> propulsive. <laughs> Shut up! I'm gonna write you that snorted. down. I, I did. knew you were gonna laugh. <laughs> propulsive. I'm writing it down. <clears throat> propulsive. <clears throat> did you get out the dictionary and find? <clears throat> I mean, you probably didn't of have to. It was in your head. No. <clears throat> so I I just said that like a <laughs> rapper NF then I I da, 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 da. anyway propulsive here's why propulsive means driving forward yeah okay so one of the words I was thinking about was forward I was thinking about just having forward be but you could push me in my chair that has wheels on it and that's moving forward right yeah, it takes yeah. no intention whatsoever versus propulsive meaning driving forward means i have to dig in like i have to i have to push this thing yeah. forward no matter what like it's gonna be my force 
that generates action. And so for me, propulsive, while it's a silly and ludicrous word, it's perfect for what I see in front of me. Hmm. So um, last year was intention. I think last year was, you know what's funny? I think when you pick a word, you don't always know why you pick it. No. Right? You think you do. Yeah. I thought I needed intention. I needed to be intentional about a few things in my life, which was totally true. But it ended up manifesting in different ways sure. that were more magical than than expected. Mm-hmm. So, for instance, I love drinking water. Mm-hmm. This is huge for me. <laughs> I, I, you cannot, and you know me, you're one of the number one rules for Jesse that Margaret know you know for a fact is don't tell me what to do. Oh, for right? sure, yeah. Like, that if you want me to not do something, tell me to do it, mm-hmm. and I'll not do it. Mm-hmm. So it has to be my idea. Mm-hmm. And the water, all these health things that I'm wanting to change, I'm realizing are only going to change if I want it. Yeah. And I realized that I was not drinking enough water, and the more I read about oh God, yeah. some of the changes I wanted in my life, the more I realized just doing simple maintenance things like drinking water help, yeah. were going to be important for me. And now I'm a water champ. Water I'm champ? I'm a water champ. <laughs> I could drink most people under the table, I think, <laughs> with what I, my daily allowance of water. Yeah. And I no, love that. You're right. And yeah. it wasn't easy, but I hacked. I figured out a hack mm-hmm. to make it easy. What would work for you. Yeah. 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 And so that's my – by choosing that word intention – Eventually, when it came to decisions in my life, I moved towards intention. And that's, I think it's a little bit like, have you ever charged a magnet before? Like, charged in school, magnet? like yeah. you would create, mag- you'd make magnets and then you would put an electrical charge on it and be 10 oh, times more powerful, yeah. right? And that's, I feel like that's what you're doing, is you're giving a charge to this to a certain idea certain idea in your head Mm -hmm. and you're allowing you're telling the universe you're telling your cells and your body Mm -hmm. we're moving towards this this Mm -hmm. year and so i did i it as i reflected on intention i like the word it worked for me it worked Mm -hmm. for you Mm -hmm. and now i'm ready to drive forward Mm -hmm. i think i needed the intention to kind of like supply up mm-hmm. I th- I th- i'm thinking right now of um there's this guy uh colin o'brady who has done some ridiculous he's an ad- adventurer and he he like scaled f- 14 of the biggest peaks in like a month some Dang. stupid thing and then he was the first person to traverse antarctica like to go from one side to the other on by himself. Jeez. And then just recently he did some sort of stupid uh sailing mission mm-hmm. from the southern tip of South America, I think, or Africa to Antarctica. Another trip no one's ever done because it's stupid, right? It's like stupid dangerous. And I think about that guy and how he was uh he had something major happen to him when he was younger. He was in a he broke both of his legs or something happened. And kind of while he was in the hospital, he had figured out this path for his life that he was going to accomplish great things. And um I think having a word or focusing on a word for the year, I think that's I think in some way you're creating the flag mm-hmm. that you're going to drive into the pinnacle of your achievement for the year. Mm-hmm. And to me, propulsive means I'm ready to drive forward. And go back, my word of the year, last year, intention, I think that was me getting the supplies ready for what I want to do this year. Mm-hmm. You can't go out and traverse Antarctica without being prepared sure, and ready yeah. for it, right? And so there's a time and a season for everything. And I was thinking about business. And I was thinking of how, you know, some teams go from doing 
a hundred deals a year to two hundred deals a year, but ra very rarely do they go from one hundred to four hundred. Mm -hmm. Right? There's a natural progression in order th to things, mm -hmm. and to get where I want to go, it's going to require diligence and effort now because it's it could take time, mm -hmm. and I don't want to waste any time. Mm -hmm. So I need to drive forward. So forward in and of itself, not enough. Yeah. But propulsive, meaning <laughs> driving forward. It's a force that's driving forward. Yeah. That's I like that. what I want this year. Okay. So when I say it that way, do you understand what I mean when I say every word has its own velocity? Mm -hmm. I think so. I mean, impact? it just makes me think of power. Yeah. And I think words are super powerful. So I would say, as I review your words, one stands out because it's not like the others. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Two are in direct conflict with each other. <laughs> Two are very similar. Three, well, th sorry. Two are very similar. And the other two are similar. So mm -hmm. you have two parallel thoughts that have been validated. And then you have one standalone thought and then two in opposition of each other <laughs> so out of the two that are in opposition for each other surrender and courage maybe i shouldn't look at it that way is surrender a state of being yeah it is yeah okay what's the courage for uh when i thought about when i was beginning to think about a word i thought about uh they always ask us to set an intention when I do hot yoga, and for some reason this whole year, every time she's, the lady says it, I think courage. I don't know if it's just to get through the, the class. Right, <laughs> probably. I've been, to, I've been to that class. Yeah. Uh, but I, then I think the other part is, like, I just uh, wrote up the coaching contract that you and I are going to go over for coaching for us. And uh, it's taken me a long time to get the courage to do that. And I don't know exactly why, because I know a lot of people that just jump into it. But I wanted to make sure that I was in a place uh, where I was ready to serve other people. And part of that is having the courage to say, I, I actually already do this. I know I can do this. I just need to do it. And so when I think about some of the things I want to do this year, it's going to take some courage to just take action. But I don't know if I necessarily need that. I was going to say, you don't seem to lack courage. Yeah. I would never no. just say that you lack courage. Yeah. I know. So, I mean, that's that, that's where I, the other words have come in, like, uh, to be and to f let things flow and to kind of surrender to things as they come, it might be much harder for me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then... Uh, I would agree with that. I also like the idea of wealth because I really want to um, focus on wealth in every aspect of my life. So not just money, but money is one of those things. And I kind of want to make a stand with it and say, yeah, that's what I want. I'm going for it. And I want wealth in my personal life, wealth in my business, wealth in uh, friends, wealth in. So that you think you're ready for, is that the next stage? Yeah. Is it? Next stage of life? I just, it, I just talked about how if you go from 100 to 400 deals, uh -huh. it takes People don't leapfrog like that. Yeah. And generally you go from 100 to 200 and 200, 300 and mm -hmm. so on. So I'm asking, is that the next stage? <laughs> are you saying, are we not there yet? <laughs> well, I definitely think that. Uh... I think I'm trying to change my mindset because I don't think I'm I've been open to the idea that I could have wealth financially yeah we've had this conversation a lot mm -hmm. and i need that to change because i'm not like not okay or comfortable with life as it is right now sure and i would challenge that by saying i know you well enough to know you're not chasing money yeah <coughs> nor do you want to mm -hmm. and that chasing money is the furthest thing from from you. Yeah. You created a conference that people attend that has a 
impact on 42 plus women every year you make very little money on but you don't measure the success through the change in your bank account no and you're also seeding the clouds of the future mm -hmm. and i don't think you're seeding it just for digits no true so as you think about what you've accomplished and done over the past couple years I feel like there's a huge difference between surrender, be, and flow, and the idea of wealth, abundance. I'm not saying one's right or wrong. Yeah. I'm wondering how we can tie those together, if they're okay. important to you. Yeah. It's specifically the wealth, abundance, and then the idea of be and flow. Yeah, because I think you and I have had this conversation a lot with commission breath <clears throat> yeah. agents that need to make money and they end up chasing people off because mm -hmm. that you can smell their desperation mm -hmm. and you aren't like that. Mm -hmm. You aspire to certain things. You aspire to a certain lifestyle or you aspire. I know you certainly fantasize and have goals about buying things that you want mm -hmm. and improving the quality of your life. Mm -hmm. And I know I have the same desires in my life. Yeah. And if you just did it for that reason, it'd be empty and hollow and unfulfilled. Yeah. Hmm. I guess I'm trying to figure out how to work on that or how to make that, yeah, how to incorporate that. Because then again, I go, I go back to, uh, I don't know if we told the audience about this, but when Enmei read our auras, I asked her to read our auras. And you know, and you've got this great green aura in your hands because you're good with money and mine is pink because I let it all flow out. And I've been thinking about that a lot and really making decisions in the moment not to buy things for people or not to spend money on certain things just because it's like an impulsive thing that I want to do. It's always for someone else. It's And I can't figure out if it's like, it's not like I'm trying to buy their love with it, but I'm like, I'm trying to figure out how to turn my hands from pink to green. And so I'm thinking like, what are the decisions in the moment? But maybe that's just more, hmm. I don't know. I love, <laughs> you're trying to change your hands from yes, pink Yes, I'm changing the color. We, a, you need a legend when you talk to Margaret. <laughs> know what color represents what. Pink means love and giving. And when Enmei talked to me about my aura, she said, your hands are pink, meaning money just flows out, which is true. I, I, can't, I don't seem to hold on to it. All right. So the words I don't see written down are sacrifice or sacrificial or. Yeah. Right. And so yeah. you're intentionally not choosing those words. Mm -hmm. Right. So, and I don't think you want you fundamentally to change or no, be different. I just want to lean into something a little bit that will strengthen me, actually. Right. Yeah. The dance one comes from uh, my mom's, one of my mom's favorite songs is I Hope You Dance. God, it's going to make me cry. <laughs> Jeff, I haven't cried on the podcast yet. Did I? God, I why, do you remember that? No, but now's a good time. Oh, jeez. Let it out, Margaret. <laughs> So she says, I hope you dance by what's her face. God. And uh, I know that my mom wants me to. How's that make you feel? <laughs> Not good. Actually makes me feel really good. Um, but she's also afraid to. And so that has held me back sometimes from taking risks, even though she would say, obviously it's not helping me back because I bought that duplex and did all the things she didn't want me to do in that house that cost a lot of money. Um, so I want to dance in a, in, a, in a meaning like not just actually literally dance, but I want to do all the things that I'm meant to do that I know will be things that, um, again, and may said when in relation to my parents and may always says, um, set your intention to the universe and then say at the end, say, or something better so that you're never limiting yourself. And she said, you are the something better for your parents. I was like, shit. So <laughs> I kind of love the word dance. Maybe that's it. <laughs> Okay, but here's my concern about this word. Yeah, there's a lot of concerns. Well, it's not yours. 
Oh, is it? And um, yeah, you just told the story, <laughs> and it's your mom's favorite song, and it's your mom's like. I know, but I'm you're like one. this representation <laughs> of this to your parents. <laughs> oh. God, this is hard. This is why but I didn't want to do this. I think we're making progress. <laughs> All right, courage. You have courage. Yeah, I don't. Need I don't it. quite understand that word for you. I think it was just from yoga. Okay, <laughs> yoga word. Is flow from yoga too? <laughs> no, flow and surrender are from uh, my journey with intuition. So surrendering, not caring so much about a specific outcome, I think has been big for me. Like you've taught me oh, a lot okay. about that. Actually, in business, is if I let go of the outcome and what I think should happen better stuff usually happens. So surrendering to that and not being such, I mean, I, I'm a planner, but I can't plan everything. Interesting. Mm -hmm. All right. So is that about like the journey? Yeah. And living more, uh, surrendering to my intuition when it happens. Like the, one of the biggest moments that I remember most that I can relate it to is when I looked up from the street at my house and said, I'm going to buy that house. And then I acted on it and there was no question. Okay. So what, you, what you just said it then, and we're moving in the same direction, which is, we always do. You and I, we both had that word intention last year. Yeah. Right. And you, but you, and you're just saying you, that was your word for last, last mm -hmm. year intention. Mm -hmm. Okay. And you, then what'd you do? Last year. You had the intention, then what'd you do? I acted. Right. Yeah. So you acted. Action. Action. Action Jackson. Yeah. Yeah, I don't, I mean, once I know something like that, like I have that gut feeling, I have no problem acting. It's the knowing, like waiting for the knowing. So waiting for the confirmation of yeah. your instinct yeah or waiting for your instinct to show up probably waiting for my instinct to show up is what i'm constantly like trying to be aware of because i didn't have to think about it i didn't even know how much the house cost or anything i just knew i was gonna make it happen i looked up said yep i'm gonna buy that house and then you looked at your pink hands and <laughs> <laughs> and the money started going all right last year was intention this year, in some way, I think it needs to be in action. It needs to be in action? I think so, based on what you're saying. You've had the year of intention, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And I feel like that's there, that's in place. And now you're looking for some sort of action to push you towards wealth towards and that. abundance. It could take well. courage, but you want it to be natural. Okay. Flow and be. Yeah. Right. So what's felt unnatural this year in the past year? What has felt unnatural? Yeah. I'm not sure. What has felt unnatural? Does anything about wealth or abundance feel unnatural to you? For sure, yeah. So maybe this is about reconciling your perception of wealth and abundance for you? Yeah, I think that's definitely part of it, for sure. I think I'm wondering if I've never experienced that really how do I make it happen? Because I'm always about the how. If I know how to do something, like once I know knew how to build the studio, I can make it happen. Mm -hmm. The hardest part is taking getting myself past the I don't know how to do that for any project. When you said let's build a studio, I was like, oh, I don't know how to do that, and I don't like that feeling. But once I get past that, then I'm I can breeze. Right. So when you when we talked about doing coaching, and then the hurdle was the contract, right? Yes. You didn't want to do the contract. No. But what made you do it? I can't wait anymore. I've been wanting to take action on that this whole year because I know that once I move in a certain direction, everything will flow with it. And I keep putting it off, putting it off, putting it off. And I thought, you know, abundance and wealth might flow to me if I take an action towards this because this will be a different income stream. 
And how do you feel now that that's done? I feel like I've a great big leap in the right direction. Yeah. <laughs> so maybe it's a leap. Yeah. It is a leap year, too. It is a leap year. <laughs> no, I think it is an action word. I think leap uh, reminds me of you just like leaving obstacles, like the small obstacles that get in the way. Like, never mind. All right? Leap is a, denotes a very aggressive action, right? It's yeah. not a hop or a skip or a jump. Like, leap is yeah. covering a large amount of ground at one time. Yeah. And surpassing obstacles easily. Yeah. Right? And it feels like, it feels, as I hear you talk about it, it seems like you're honoring your intuition. Mm -hmm. You maybe want to do it faster. Mm -hmm. And that you're removing obstacles. Mm -hmm. I like that. And that that's creating abundance and wealth. Mm -hmm. No, it feels good. Yeah, I like it. I feel like that's not quite, we're not done yet. I still get this idea of you. So I visually see you. I see like a mountain stream, like barely trickling, but then you, you're like pulling rocks out of it and it like magnifies, like it gets deeper. This is so weird. <laughs> if I can tie something in, that's really strange is well, for some people it's strange, not for me. Um, on New Year's Eve, a little tradition that started is my friends, Jake and Jared come over and they, Jake brings his tarot cards and he did a reading for me about my career. And the first card he pulled was a mountain with a whole bunch of obstacles that I had created for myself that I was taking apart. Like it's exactly like what you're describing. Just had to say it. Yeah. You picture that? Why? I don't know. I'm just telling you what I see. When I hear you talk, I'm what visually what I'm doing is I'm taking all these words that you had and I'm rather than picking them apart. I know I I need to categorize things. I need yeah. to compartmentalize things. Yeah. So I had to break them down into what's alike and what's different, but then say, okay, how are they the same? Yeah. Because these are all words that resonate with you. Mm -hmm. So when I think, and then as I break it down, as you break it down, you're saying that you want to be in a state of flow. You want to surrender to a state of being that, is in harmony with wealth and yeah, abundance. Totally. And you want the courage to be able to do that. Yeah. And then dance is this odd <laughs> <laughs> pimple on the, <laughs> the rest of your words. And maybe it's not. I just see you like um, right now this whole scene is very like, what's the the nanny in the mountains with all the kids? The Van Traps? <laughs> The sound of sound music esque. Wow. Yeah, I'm seeing you dancing in this long <laughs> <laughs> matronly. Oh my god! <laughs> dress in the mountains as you remove rocks from streams. And <laughs> you're a little bit like that, the frozen princess. You're gonna <laughs> send a cavalcade oh of water god. down on the That's community. That's hysterical. Well, I do believe that uh, the small rocks I've made for myself, like the contract. And even the application process, because I want to have that. I don't want to work with just anybody. Um, I think once I remove those, it will flow. And I know that what I have to offer and what I will be able to do with people one-on-one -on -one is very different than what I can do for people in a classroom or even on the podcast. Like working with 30 to 50 people in a room and then you get me one-on-one -on -one, when I can focus on just one person and really think about uh, – what their goals are and what they need to do or what I see that maybe they don't see. Uh, I know it will all flow. And so these little obstacles that I put out there are just little mini roadblocks that I guess it's like what I told you guys at the team meeting when I got back from vacation, it was like uh, after Googling and looking on Facebook, um, nobody shares their contract and I understand why we don't share ours or non-compete or anything like that. Uh, it always goes back to the same thing. You just Google it. And then you do it <laughs> and you just put your own words in there and put your own, what you want your program and everything to look like. And there's no way of getting around it. Like you just always, we always have to do it yourself, which is what we always tell people when they come to us for information. 
we can share our operations manual with it. We can sell it to you, but ultimately it's your business. It's just like same for us. Are you looking up cinnamon synonyms? Uh, the one that kind of comes up is overcome. Oh. For removing obstacles. Like I was yeah. trying to think of a word that means removing obstacles. Yeah. And overcome is the one that kind of comes up. So then if I look for words similar to that. Um, I'm looking. Overcome. Also means to achieve a victory over. Achieve a victory. Kind of like victory. All right, victory. I want another goal f for me this year is to put WD-40 all over this table <laughs> and the legs. Wow. These walls are thin. We just heard someone <laughs> exclaim, yes. 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 Was that Jessica? Probably. Because I just texted in the back and said that. Yes. All right. Synony synonyms to victory, achievement, advantage, conquest, mastery, success, supremacy, triumph. Achievement, advantage, winning. Yeah, I keep going back to the word leap, though. Yeah. I really like that one. Well, it, I think it works on a lot of levels. It's an action word. It kind of dance, kind of, yeah. it actually works for dance. It actually does work for all of them. And almost. it works for all your words. And Wealth, surrender, be, dance, abundance, courage, flow. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I think that feels right. Well, that was a journey. <laughs> <laughs> No, I think I'm really, like, I think one of the reasons why I haven't, you know, people have been asking me about it, and someone just texted me as we started this podcast and said, hey, do you have your word for the year yet? I'm like, damn, people, they're really, like, in my head right now. Uh, but I want so many things to be different and to advance this next year for us and the business and personal life and all these things that I think that's why I haven't been able to nail it yet, as I was, I wanted to, I want all this stuff. And I think we've been working so hard the last couple of years. It's kind of like a culmination of patience and um, grit and persistence and driving. And I'm ready f to see the fruits of our labor. <laughs> I'm like, All right. <laughs> I am so ready. I'm so ready. There's a um, quote from uh, Russell Wilson. Mm -hmm. I saw it today. For those that don't know, Russell Wilson is the quarterback of the Seattle Seahawks. He's cute. <laughs> He's cute. <laughs> okay. Remember when I went on that show and asked him that question, the fake question? Yes, I do remember. Uh, anyway, he had kind of, I want to find the quote to like have the greatest impact. But he basically, he won the Super Bowl very young in his career. I think it was his second year in the NFL. He I didn't won. know that. Yeah, he won the Super Bowl. So basically the oh. thing that he said is like, it's been a tough seven years. It's tough to keep a positive attitude and keep going forward when it's been seven years. Like, yeah. And I was like, oh, me and Russell, we're the same. <laughs> <laughs> right? Like. And this is on my mind often, and it kind of goes back to last year and our word and everything else, is there are cycles to life. We can't expect things to be good all the time. No. And we shouldn't expect things to be bad all the time mm -hmm. either. We're going to have highs and we're going to have lows. And each of those makes us grateful for the other. Mm -hmm. I look for landmarks, I look for stories that I can attach myself to that get me through the next phase. 
Uh, Tiger Woods, an example of someone who had huge success early. And I look at Russell Wilson and, and Tiger Woods, and you see them kind of, there's a benefit to not knowing. What I mean by that is by being young and not knowing the rules and not knowing the fears and the doubts, not having the doubts, yeah. you can achieve things that other people can't achieve. Sure. Because you don't know better. Not blocking anything. Right? Yeah. Tiger Woods, his whole life unravels mm -hmm. in a very public and embarrassing way. Mm -hmm. And then his health declines, and he has to fight for the, a decade mm -hmm. to get it back. Mm -hmm. But he does it. He does yeah, it. That's amazing. And he's a better man for it. He's a better person. He's a better player. And now he has more respect for it, too, mm -hmm. for having overcome. He wasn't just some flash-in-the-pan kid no. with privilege and lessons, and he did really well, and that's it. His story wasn't over. And when I look at Russell Wilson and what the story he's trying to tell, it's the same thing for him. It's been harder these last seven years than it was the first two mm -hmm. for him. And... um the point of the quote that I can't find right now, but it, the point was you, it's hard to be positive over a long period of time Yeah, in the face of proof to the otherwise, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And, um, but he does it. He still shows up, still does it, mm -hmm. still does the hard work, still does amazing plays. Mm -hmm. He's generally the best player on the team. Mm -hmm. You're in, you're out. But and that's the mentality that it takes. Mm -hmm. And so <laughs> you and I are always in the same. We're always like this is the year. <laughs> like, and it's so silly. <laughs> you know, I we were just talking about how life is a construct and this new year's is a construct to some well, yeah. yes. And um especially the weight that we give it. It's like moving to a different state and expecting things to be different. Mm -hmm. It's like, oh, it's 2020. It's not 20. Thank God, 2019. <laughs> and usually people bemoan the year. <laughs> like, there's very few people that were like, 2019 was the best year ever. No, most people are saying how awful it was for them. And, uh, and you know, you start to rack those up and then look at the story that it tells you. And... It's not a good one mm -mm. if that's your focus. Mm -hmm. And so I don't yeah. delude myself into thinking that this new year is like not going to have any struggle. Sure. Is yeah. not going to be is going to be so much better than yeah. last year. Yeah. It's going to be better in some areas of my mm -hmm. life and worse than others. Mm -hmm. And I'm in control of that. Yeah. Well, and how do you define better? Exactly. Because like as much as these last 10 years have been incredibly changing and, and mm -hmm. hard for both of us in different ways, it. I'd also say that some of the best things happened because of that. Right. Because of the shit. Right. So. And I, I'm a believer that all these things happen for a reason because there's something coming mm -hmm. for us to be ready for. Mm -hmm. and no, he, I literally feel like we've been in training. Boot camp. Boot camp. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Jared said that to me the other night too, actually New Year's Eve. He said, uh, I feel like you've been in training. And he has always said, <laughs> I was thinking of this, it kind of reminds me of the Hunger Games. Like He's, he's always said, I'm going to be your hairstylist. Whenever you have to go to some big show and speak or something, I'm going to come with you and do your hair before. <laughs> so I have this vision in my head. Uh, You're going to have a glam squad. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> but I do think both you and I have had some really interesting things happen in our life that uh, – have literally has prepped us for like, there's not much that can really Dangerous. shake me. Right. And you it's can, funny. Like... It, it, I know I've talked about this recently, but it just, it's still amazing to me. I see, actually, this was a great example through the holiday season. I see these young up and comers and they're spending money like it's water. And they're, they're posting their cars with yeah. the bows on them. Yeah. And I'm like, whoa, slow down. Like, this is a good, you're in a good cycle. Yeah. But it, you're not going to be there forever. Yeah. Right? Keep and it. Like, Keep some of it. Yeah. And uh, it's just so funny. In our industry, especially, everything's so, mm -hmm. is such mm -hmm. a facade. Mm -hmm. Everything is such a mirage. Mm -hmm. The, the, 
Land Rovers and the Range Rovers and the Louis Vuitton and the Prada. It's it ridiculous. And yeah. everyone lives way out beyond their means. Yeah. Everyone. Yeah. To the point where money becomes trivial. We trivialize money because we triv because it's fifteen hundred dollars for a bag. Mm-hmm. We don't trivialize the bag. We trivialize the money. That's true. It's interesting that you say that. Like, uh, it just reminds me of I was a Facebook post that I took a snapshot of. I'm gonna have to find it. Um, and it's this woman who's been uh, working for a C-suite executive for like 28 years, and she just moved over to real estate, where she's explained the situation. She's helping a CEO, and he's asked her to just manage his time, nothing else. And yet he won't allow her to. And so she's literally going crazy. She said, I've been working for C-suite executives my whole life, and now I switched over to real estate, and I think I might be going nuts. And so someone tagged me and said, talk to Margaret Smith, <laughs> and you might need to be a part of this other group, Admin Success Principles, which is an EA group for admin and real estate. And it just has really been, been it, like what you just mentioned about money. It's made me think about the differences between working in other industries and this industry. And I think you're right. I think... That's so interesting. I don't ever want that to happen for me. No, look at, okay. And I I hate to, I certainly, I had a really hard time this holiday season. It was funny. I asked you, I thought I'd, I was better than previous years. I asked Jill. It was a tough year. Though. Everyone said I was a monster. <laughs> like, I wouldn't say monster, but it, it's not new to me. And maybe, maybe it might be newer for Jill. I know, but Jill. every year I try to be better. And I so, know you're actively aware, and so I'd say you are better. But uh, I know what you mean, and it's but it's a hard year, and I get it. So I have a hard time relaxing during the holiday season. I get, I get stressed out. It stresses me out, and uh, people almost manifest a lack of business. They almost manifest a lack of productivity, and oh, I yeah. feel like I'm forced to accept it. You know. Hmm. Because to to be otherwise would be scroogish and well, you drive yourself crazy. And so I do my best to like wait for this all to be over. But as soon as it hit December twenty sixth, I had this huge sense of relief. Mm-hmm. I was so happy because now I could demand productivity and not be an ogre, or I could be I could share that I wanted to be productive, and it's it, it felt unseemly to say that. Hmm. In the spirit of the season, right? Hmm. Um, yeah, I feel like you really put this upon yourself every winter, and uh, and I think I've been trying to figure out like how to help you understand that. I feel the same way. Like I don't ever. I view the winter season as just as productive for me as in the admin realm as any other season because for me it's the time to like do all the back end stuff that I don't have time to do when we're super. You know, we have a lot of deals going on. Um, but even then some of our most productive months have before been in these months. Well, and we come up with good ideas and we put new things in action and we do, I'm not saying that it's just, I know it's like, I can't figure out exactly what it is for you. That's not, something's not clicking for me. It's not, um, I can't figure out, I guess I'm trying to figure out how to help you, which is like my job forever. And I can't figure it out because, uh, I still feel like we're productive, but it's not what you like. It's not what you're seeing or what you want to see, or I don't know if it's action, or like I'm literally have always tried to figure dollar, it out. Dollar, dollar bills, yo. <laughs> yeah, so it's the checks. You want to see the checks. And, well, we haven't had the agents to help us with that in the last couple of years, so we finally have some people, um, and they're newer. Would it just checks be helpful the most? I mean, I, this is a stupid question, I guess. I don't know. I don't know. I'm sure you checks year-round would help always. Why did I bring this up now? Now I'm, I have to go back. To... <laughs> well, you're talking about the difference between industries and how this trivializes money. Agents trivialize money, I, which is an interesting idea to talk about because you're right. Some of the pictures I saw on Facebook of people going out and buying cars. Um, I don't, I'm not. I don't know. I don't mean to judge those people. I'm. I here's what you're I'm just coming to say. from a wealth of experience. Of, yes. Yes. I have the wisdom of experience to know. Hey, slow your roll. Mm-hmm. I remember uh, there was someone who used to be on our team who was an investor, and he had a Tag Hauer watch, and he was behind on his payments. Mm. And I was like, "How do you feel about that watch?" You know? And he's like, "Well, it seems 
silly now. And that always resonated with me. I remember when um, the housing recession was strong and I was going on like five to 10 short sale consultations oh. a week. Yeah. And I always saw the biggest TVs in those houses. Mm. Like the homes with the biggest TVs were the ones mm -hmm. that weren't paying their mortgage. And um, I think part of that was good and gave me wisdom. It also created some fear, you know, with um, even in times of prosperity, I'll talk myself out of a purchase because of that. Sure. And part of that's healthy. Part of it and is I healthy. And I always for want sure. that. Yeah. So, anyway, I I understand your your friend is. Uh, I feel bad for your friend. I hope she moves on, because that's not the sign of a leader that. Which one is willing to do? It. Oh yes, well I I got connected with her via messenger and that so. person is working for someone who's not ready to, unfortunately not make the changes. Yeah, yeah, poor guy. Yeah. Anyway, this was a great episode. <laughs> I know I always say that you do always, but I felt really it feels good to have my word finally. Thank you. Your words leap. Mm -hmm. Just one word. And now I'm picturing myself leaping, so I'm gonna have to have someone take a picture of that, make me look more elegant than. I like it too. I think it. I like that it. It marries all your words. Ah, together. that's what I like too. I like something that income, and that's what I love about words is that you can usually find one that resonates with the thing. Uh, your word of the year coaching <laughs> available <laughs> for one ninety nine for a limited time only. <laughs> No, I think people will appreciate this, though. Yeah. Well, happy birthday to me. <laughs> happy birthday. I'm going to take this day and <laughs> celebrate myself. Do it. Uh, Embrace it. I am. I'm embracing today. Cool. And I'm making everybody celebrate me today. <laughs> yeah. No, I, uh, you know, I think I celebrated me today by... Um, well, it, you did what you wanted to do. Well, in my, that same way with that word intention, like benching. So I benched 310 pounds 10 times today. And that's a huge personal record for me recently. I used to do like 340. It's ridiculous. But uh -huh. I did 340 like six to eight times. So being back in that range and doing 310 and 10 times, like I feel... I feel like I'm back. I feel like I'm strong. I don't feel weak. No, I'm I mean, old. speaking of leaps, you've made some huge leaps from where you were physically last January. Well, I feel like if you think that now, wait until next year mm -hmm. because I'm going to move with propulsive energy <laughs> <laughs> towards the things that I want in my life. I can't wait to make an image for And I'm moving our words. towards health. And I'm drinking water and I'm eating better and I'm drinking less and Do you feel better about that? I do. Because remember last year you no, were not in a good do. place mentally. Here's something you should know about me. Oh, please. If I do anything, it's because it feels good. <laughs> well, yeah. No, I mean yes, this. No, if I drink true. water, it's because yes. I feel good. Yeah. If I go out and have fun, it's because it feels good. Mm -hmm. If I go to bed, it's because it feels good. Like I move towards what feels, what the feels best. good. <laughs> and I'm finally to an age where I can let go of some of these feel good traps yeah. of my youth. They don't feel good That's anymore. That's a good idea. That's a good way to put it, actually. And realizing, oh, I don't need to do this. Yeah, I like that. It was a habit. I did it because it was a routine. It was a routine. What I don't need to. it. What is And listening to my body and saying, what is it you need right now? Mm -hmm. That's a good one. Strategery. <laughs> 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 oh my god you guys so as you listen to this amazing episode please post your words of the year and share this episode i haven't made a, a claim to this recently or a request of you guys uh but i would like you to share this epi show, episode episode if I can talk, and share um maybe one of the other episodes that really hit you hard in 2019 because 2020 is coming for you. Right. I want to know what people's I favorite know. episode was of 2019. Yeah. I'd like to know what really, what resonated with you and really helped we you. We could do a clip show, but it 
would take so much work. <laughs> I mean, clips of every episode or what? Um, our the like highlights? top 10 moments. <laughs> we might have to do that. Top 10 times Margaret snorted. Oh my God. Yeah. Yeah. Epic. All right. Thanks for listening, everyone. Happy birthday to me. Happy birthday to you. <laughs> <laughs>